Okay, so let's get this belt put back on. So, the two marks that are closest to each other are the ones that are going to go at the top of the engine. Okay, so one goes here, one goes here. Loop the belt around the idle pulley. Make sure you get the marks lined up, which is not yet. What you can do is you can use some G clamps just to hold the belt on as you're trying to uh, on the other pulleys as you're trying to slide it on the bottom pulley. Okay. It's a bit of a fast but it goes on the air. Make sure the belt is on all the way around. Get that tensioner set as well too. Put our note back on. At least the time belt is back on now anyway, so we're, we're alright in that front. But, obviously we'll have to take that back off again. So, for the moment anyway, let's leave this engine alone because there's nothing more I can do with it. I'm hoping that I can get a refund for the, um, I'm hoping that I can get a refund for the, the uh, clutch kit. If not, what I'm going to try and do is sell it privately. Because, you know, they're expensive and that's never been used. So, uh, yeah, I'm going to have to figure that out. Um, right, so let's go to have a look at the van. Um, okay, so here's the engine we're replacing. This is the uh, AAZ, AAZ engine um, in the back of the van. And... Um, Basically what we need to do is remove this. So, um, yeah, and obviously the gearbox down the back then as well too. But a uh, bit of work involved in it, but what I'm gonna do now is I want to um, basically drain all the fluids out of it. So let's start by doing that. Okay, so the oil is draining out of that there now anyway, so that's basically step one. What I'm gonna do is uh, I'm gonna disconnect the uh, the fuel pump, uh, the solenoid and the fuel pump. So we need an 8 mil smart crash. So, um, yeah, basically what I was doing is that there was this wire here that goes onto the uh, solenoid down there on the fuel pump. It was on that, uh, that terminal there. And uh, basically uh, that solenoid clicks in to shut the engine off. That's about the extent of the electronics on this engine. Everything uh, that this engine needs to run is inside this fuel pump. Um, but uh, as I said, normally it's a very good engine, but it's just that this one's tired. I actually kind of put a new timing belt on this recently, but I'm not inclined to reuse it, to be honest. Um, so, uh, yeah, we'll be putting a new fuel, uh, fuel pump on. There's a new, uh, or, sorry, a new uh, timing belt on the new engine. There's a new fuel filter on this and everything as well. There's new fuel lines right the way up to the pump. Um, so the, this engine has actually been well maintained, but it's fighting me at every turn as far as maintenance is concerned, and I just don't trust it anymore. And you can't be expected to go away uh, travelling in a um, in a 30-year-old, uh, uh, well, 33-year-old Volkswagen van uh, when you don't trust it. So um, yeah, can't be having that. So um, yeah, what I'm going to do now is um, the engine is essentially at this point in time is out of action. So. We're going to start disconnecting things. 
Okay, so what I did was I uh, I put about two liters of diesel into the uh, like after draining a lot of the oil out, I put uh, about two liters of diesel into the engine just to um, kind of flush it out a little bit, uh, make sure there's no sludgy oil in the galleries or anything like that. When I take it off, like when I take the sump off, I want it to be as clean as it can be. And um, so now what I need to do is I need to take the exhaust off. If you have a look down here, uh, have a look under the underneath the engine. Um, do you see there's the exhaust, right? Now there's a bracket uh, from the exhaust going on to the going going on to the sump over here, okay? And then we've also got this oil filler as well, so that needs to come off too. So um that's really the next thing we need to do is to start taking that off. Um, I'm going to take the, uh, the exhaust off in its entirety, so I'll take it off as far back as the turbo if it'll come off uh, easily enough. If not, I'll just break it um, at that, uh, that joint there. Okay, so we're making a little bit of progress at long last today. There's the exhaust off the van now. And... Underneath. And yes, there is the crankshaft the bottom of the engine because I have to sump off as well too. So um, I unfortunately made an absolute mess of the place because it kind of fell off. <laughs> I uh, slipped out of my hand so whatever oil was left and it spilled in my driveway so I'm going to have to sort that out. Um, and I also took the oil pump off so the oil pump is over there now as well too. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to take the sump and oil pump out of the new engine and I'm going to put it onto this to keep it uh, complete and to keep it dry. One thing I never did do is actually check the uh, new engine to see if it actually had any oil in it. It turns out it's actually full of oil. And the oil doesn't look that bad. I mean, for a diesel engine, that's pretty typical what it's coming out of. There's certainly no water in it or anything like that. If there was water in it, we'd have a major problem. But that's uh, draining nicely there now anyway. And uh, I think the drain pan is nearly full actually. So uh, we better uh, do something about that. I think it's nearly finished anyway. So um, yeah, the sump guard on was actually like plastic. So that came off quite e quite handy. Um, it just kind of clips on. And uh, yeah, so we'll get that sump off and we'll throw it onto the old engine anyway. At least that's uh, that's going to keep everything um, the way it should be. Uh, well, sort of. So um, there's the uh, oil sump off the uh, the new engine. It's a bit sludgy actually. Um, it's not too bad now, but well, it's pretty bad. It could have benefited from an oil change or two over its life, but still though, it should still be all right anyway. Um, like the, as I said, the oil wasn't terrible coming out of it. It wasn't great, but it wasn't terrible. There's the two oil pumps. And you can see that's the oil pump that's, uh, that's off the van, and uh, I actually had changed the oil changed the oil pump in the van a, uh, a few um, uh, a few years ago. So that's a relatively new oil pump. Uh, oil pump. So that's what's going to be going into it. Uh, that's the one off the uh, AHU engine, so you can see where it picks up is completely different because that has to go down into the um, that has to go down into the, sump, the wedge shaped sump. So what we we'll do is we we'll put the oil pump in first of all, which is probably a good a good uh, idea. It'd be difficult to put in afterwards, and then we will pop this oil pump into the van, and we will put that uh, the uh, AHU sump onto the AZ engine just to, uh, as I said, just to keep it dry. And uh, I have a new sump gasket for that then as well too. So you can have a look at the crankshaft in it there as well too. Um, it's all looking reasonable enough up there. Black and oily as you can expect, but you know it's uh, still 1997 VW engine, diesel engine, so it's going to be pretty geeky. But uh, what I'll do is I'll do a couple of engine oil flushes on it and stuff like that. Take all of the crap out. I mean, when I say it's sludgy, uh, the oil is sludgy. It's not like the the screen isn't blocked or anything like that. It's not. It's not that bad. But um, yeah. Anyway, sure. We will. Um, uh, we'll put everything uh, back together there now. I think that's clean enough, don't you? What we'll do is we'll, we'll uh, clean up the face of the uh, the, the ceiling face. Then I'm going to put a bead of a uh, bead of sealant on that there, and um, stick the new gasket on, and we'll pop it on. I've already fitted the oil pump anyway as well too. If you actually have a look now the way the oil pump is sitting. Um, see, like the engine when it's over inside, that uh, that part there will be flat. So that's uh, that's how that works. And um, actually, the bolts were shorter going through it as well too, so I couldn't even use the bolts out of this engine for them. So um, yeah. Anyway, uh, next thing is, as I said, is to get that new sump put on. So um, we'll do that. 
Okay, the uh, kind of slightly crusty looking starting motor I got off the uh, scrapyard seems to work fine. I actually gave it, put a little bit of power onto it there just to um, make sure because uh, that would have pissed me off something fierce if it hadn't worked. So let's see. You ever wondered how a start motor works? There you go. So there's always power going to the solid to one side of the solenoid there from the battery, right? And what happens is this little tin wire here is um, it, taking power basically from the ignition key um, and sending it to the windings on the solenoid, which pull that back. And when they pull back, they make contact with uh, two terminals in the back of the starter. And when they make contact, that starts the motor turning. But when the, when the solenoid pulls back, it pushes the uh, it pushes the bending gear forward. And there's also a clutch in there as well too, so that if the engine spins faster. Than the uh, start motor, it doesn't uh, take the start motor with it. At least that's the idea, anyway. So uh, I'm going to simulate turning the key. To remember, it's power going to one side of the starter already, and when we pull in, uh, when we pull in that solenoid, the motor starts turning. So uh, yeah, it would um, it would take the hand off you if you were to cross it. To be honest with you, they're quite powerful. I think they're about uh, one horsepower or so, anyway. Um, well, maybe maybe a little less, but uh, certainly not much less. But um, yeah, it's quite a sizable lump of a starter on this uh, when you compare it to the size of the starter for the Beetle, which we'll be having a look at at some stage. So anyway, right. Uh, what annoys me though is the fact that we haven't got a flywheel, um, and um, the flywheel that was on it was for a, a transverse mounted engine anyway, so it wouldn't have actually worked. So I did actually dump it. I went up to the dump with a load of cardboard, and uh, I brought the flywheel with me and turf that as well too. Um, so uh, unfortunately there's nothing for the starter to engage with. Obviously those gears have to engage with something and they engage with the side of the flywheel. So um, yeah. Uh, anyway, uh, in, on, on the plus side I did get a lot of the oily bits that I really wasn't looking forward to do, uh, doing done. Um, the oil sump is now on this um, and uh, I put the uh, or some from the AHU engine on the back on the bottom of the van. Now it won't work on that, but it's just to stop the oil from dripping on the driveway. I've already made shit in my driveway, to be honest. So um, yeah, uh, you can see it's up on axle stands there. I'm actually going to just leave it on the axle stands um, because when we drop the engine and gearbox out, it's uh, it's going to need to be up that high anyway. So um, yeah, so what are we looking at here now anyway? Um, I'll get a new. Uh, I'll get another flywheel. Um, I will get the. Uh, uh, I'm going to fit the turbo now, um, and I will get the proper timing belt. Um, the uh, flywheel was my own stupid fault. I ordered the wrong one. The uh, AHU engine um, for the transverse mounted engine. It's it's different flywheel. So um, anyway, that's my own stupid fault. The timing belt, on the other hand, I ordered the right one and I got the wrong one. Um, so. Uh, I'm a little bit miffed with that, but um, anyway, look at I will get onto the crowd that I bought it off, and um, I will uh, I'll get them to send me out another one. Um, it was annoying to be honest with you, but uh, there you have it. It looks like a timing belt for a petrol engine actually, because it's that much shorter, um, and obviously in a petrol engine, it's not driving an injection pump, so uh, it probably is. Uh, it's probably maybe it'll fit the Golf. Actually, no, it won't because the Golf is uh, narrower. Uh, I don't know, anyway, look, I'm not keeping it, I'll send it back to them. Um, so, uh, yeah, anyway, right, so, um, yeah, I'm going to fit the turbo now, I'm going to fit the uh, the EGR blanking plate, and uh, I think I'll call it a day at that, I think I've done enough. Um, my head's not, uh, I'm not in the mood for it today, to be honest with you. Okay, I think I've done as much as I'm going to do today. Um, I did accomplish a bit in the end. At least a lot of the sort of dirty, horrible, oily stuff is done now. The uh, oil sump and the oil filler is on the uh, new engine now. Um, there we go. Uh, I cleaned up uh, some of the pulleys and uh, put uh, put the water pump pulley back on. Except for the alternator pulley, actually, I'm just looking at that. It's just got a little bit rusty. The turbo is back on there now anyway as well too. And um, yeah, so uh, oh, and also as well too, I have uh, installed an EGR blanking plate, so that's that out there. So basically, that just takes the EGR out of the equation. It leaves it there, but it doesn't do anything anymore. 
Um, they're problematic. I don't need it. Like the reason I'm replacing this engine is because I want it to be more reliable. And the last thing I need is for it to be given problems with things like EGR valves and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah, um, I'm going to go inside and I'm going to do some shopping and see if I can find the right uh, flywheel for this. And once I get that, at least I can actually crank it over. I'll put some oil in it and uh, spin it on the starter, see if I get oil pressure, and then I can start hooking up the electrical harness and seeing if I can actually get it to start. I mean, hanging like that with a flywheel on it and with the electrical harness connected, it should actually run without putting the gearbox on. Um, I think what I do is I put it down on the ground and lean it over to the side to the correct orientation. You'll see now, if you stand back and actually have a look at the the, uh, where the oil sump is, the bottom of that oil sump will be flat. So the whole engine has to come out, has to turn over onto its side there. Just because of the way it's hanging on the crane is, uh, you know, it's, it's kind of more upright than it actually will be. But, um, yeah, so, uh, anyway, the other thing as well too I need to do is I need to pick up a uh, tensioner pulley for the uh, alternator belt. And the other one is dead, the bearing is seized up in it. So, uh, I'd say it was squeezing, uh, er, squeezing, uh, squealing like a mad thing. Um, so, uh, yeah, I can't imagine that was very pleasant when it was running. Unless it seized up since it was taken out of the, uh, the uh, car, but uh, I have my doubts. Anyway, look at... Uh, thanks very much for watching, folks. I know I didn't get as much done today as I kind of hoped, but... Them's the brakes, you know, cause that's just the way things go sometimes. Um, I mean, the next time I come out to the garage and I have all the parts, hopefully I'll make a lot more uh, progress. And um, the uh, gearbox should be going back on now soon as well too. And uh, we will uh, then set about actually taking the engine and gearbox out of the out of the van. So uh, yeah, um, don't forget to like and subscribe. And uh, yeah, you'll see my uh, progress. Thanks very much for watching.